So we are going to start with the marketing plan. So we're going to have a lot of these documents set as templates for you to be able to copy uh, and follow along as the weeks go on. So if you see me doing this, just feel free to watch and take notes and we'll have this uh, go out to you guys in a post uh, video recap, along with a copy of the video for you to share or to use amongst your teams. Um, for right now, we're going to get started with putting together the marketing plan. So the first lesson that we're going to start with is uh, the obvious, uh, how to set up a marketing plan. I'm put all the points here for you. Um, how to set up feature FM for acts for like for success, how to create links for your socials and optimize them to capture data. And then also how to use a content calendar for your release. So we're going to start from the very beginning. Uh, and this is what we're going to walk through over the next hour. So first off, um, I like to use Google Docs for marketing plans, just because generally there are more than one person that I'm working with to keep track of different facets of a marketing plan. But at the very top of a campaign, I like to start with uh, just some basic tenets of the release and the situation uh, that the release is, is going to be. So for our example, we're going to say that we're working with an EP. Uh, previously, we've talked about singles and things like that. So I want to focus because, because this is four weeks on a complete uh, cycle. So first off, we'll start with the artist. For our example, we're going to use share um, for the name of the EP. We'll put that it's just self titled um, distribution. We'll just say that she's uh, distributing herself, which means that she would be going through uh, one of the many uh, wonderful distribution services out there like Ditto or Symphonic or Believe or uh, there's a bunch of them. Um, so we'll just say that she's going to self distribute. Uh, this will be an EP. And we're going to say that it's going to come out in, on December 31st. So beyond that, we also like to include the ISRC or UPC for the album. Um, this will be uh, much more useful for us as we walk into the lesson with the pre-save that we're going to set up for this. So just keep in mind that you'll be able to um, get this number from your distribution company once you've set up the release in their system. Um, this marketing uh, course is meant to start after you've already submitted to your distribution company and you you have this information to use. So just in case anybody's wondering like at what point are we in the release cycle, we're at the very beginning, but you've already submitted all your files. So grab this number. Um, we're just gonna make a generic set of them um, just for this example, but you should be able to get that from your um, distribution company. And then also I like to start it off with sort of like a 30 day uh, or 60 day lead up to the release date. So we're going to say November, December for like the actual months. What socials we're going to be using. Um, that's a huge part of the campaign. So socials for me are just like Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Uh, so we're going to list all those. This will come in handy in a second when we go on. And then we're going to do the streaming services. So we'll do Apple, Spotify, Pandora, uh, internationally, Deezer, Tidal. What else should we do? Um, we can do some international ones. Let's do Boom Play, Ngami. Thank you. I think that will cover most of our use cases. So for the Facebook, um, for socials, I like to just include links to those. Um, this will come in handy later on in the campaign, um, but for right now, the whole purpose of the first point that we're trying to do is we're trying to set up our feature FM account, but also our uh, marketing plan for success. So I would go into my feature FM account at this point. And what we're going to do is we're going to fill in the basic account information, but we're also going to um, put in pixels and things like that. 
on the master account level so we can uh, set everything up correctly. So prior to a release starting, you want to make sure your general settings are set up. So that means all of this basic information and then your default link settings. So for our release for this artist, we're going to use all of the stores that I already mentioned. Um, so let's do YouTube music instead of that. QQ and Gami title boom play. All right, perfect. I think we're all set up there. Okay. And we're going to use a custom subdomain. And then store territories, we don't really need to map out anything yet. We'll get to these later on. Um, localization, let's clean this up. So this is the part where you would be entering in your pixel, Facebook pixels. Um, for us, we're going to use a pixel that I already have. So you can grab this from Facebook Business Manager. And then Google Pixel, that comes from Google Ads. Um, we have FAQ articles that we'll include on how to grab these. Um, but when you set up your account, you'll be able to grab these um, from those places. We're just going to use pretend numbers for right now. And then make sure that this part is checked. If you have Google Tag Manager, or you want to use a TikTok pixel. Um, we, have a, we have a webinar that we did about two weeks ago on that. Um, you would just put in your Google Tag Manager number. Um, I can show you what that looks like so you can see. So it's a pretty easy process to just create it and grab it. You'd have to put in your container name that you want to use and all of these different sections, depending on what you want to do for your artist. Um, we'll just say that we'll use her website. This is not real, so don't try to um, do anything with that. You just fill in the basic information. Click yes. And then this is your Google tag code. This is what you would actually put on your website. Um, you'd actually grab your number right here. This would be the number for your Google Tag Manager. So we'll use that for our account. I'll show you later on uh, in next week how to set up the Google Pixel with TikTok, but just so this is set up correctly for us. There you go. And then all you do is click save. And this is saved for your master account settings. So going back, we'll go to the artist folder that we created for the artist. If you want to create an artist folder, you would just click on the plus button, which most of you will probably already have this set up. So you'd go in, you would put in the name of the artist, an artist image, if they're a band or an individual artist, and then the country. Um, you don't need to fill in the short bio unless you really want to. This section, I do suggest you fill in uh, the Spotify artist page. All of these things will populate on the actual links that you create with our platform. So if you do it once, you don't have to do it again. So fill those in. I already did that for this artist just to sort of save us some time in our setup. But you can see here, all of these are here. Let me edit this. So we'll fill these in. Yes, I've memorized all of her social handles. It's not that hard. Uh, her Spotify, we'll save this for a second. Let's do this. See where to grab this. And we're grabbing the artist link. We're not grabbing a release link. Uh, then for her YouTube channel, we'll just look that up really fast. So we're all set. And we're gonna have to refill this in. Okay, great. Um, you can put in the artist's SoundCloud link or their TikTok page if it's relevant for their audience. Um, for this one, 
it's not really, unfortunately. But if you want to do that, you should be able to do that. Just grab it from like the TikTok, either the TikTok mobile app, or you can just Google the artist name on Google and that will surface. All right, so we're all set. We're gonna say her genre as well. It's gonna be pop. Okay, so artists, the profile settings are all set. Now going into default stores, we're gonna just clean this up so that it matches what we're trying to do. YouTube music. And our email subscribe form is actually a store now. So you'd actually have to add that to the artist if you want it to show up on the list of stores. So just to note that, it used to be its own separate page. It's actually a store. I'll show you what it looks like in a second, but you can add it there. And then we're gonna make her default link, share.ffm.to for her artist folder. And just cleaning all this up, making sure. Got everything in here, perfect. All right, all set. If you have somebody that you wanna also work with, uh, you can go to the user management tab and invite somebody. Um, there's varying degrees of access, which you can see on there. But for our example, we're just gonna be working with the artist folder. Okay, so we've got all of the links for her socials up. Um, one place that we wanna start with the artist is um, you're actually seeing a new feature that we have for analytics. Um, one thing that we want to start with is creating short links for socials. So for social profiles, the first place that I always start with with the marketing at the top of a marketing campaign is creating short links for all of their social profiles and then putting those in places where you would want to optimize them, which I'll show you in a second. So for us, the main points of our, of our marketing plan are to do this we're going to do facebook twitter instagram youtube and TikTok. so for that we're going to go here and we're going to create all these short links for this artist now the benefit of a short link is we can just name them the acronym for the artist's social profile so we're just going to do this really fast for each one Make sure that you have your pixels installed because you can um, we have something. You can um, keep track of all the pixels that people, every time somebody clicks on these, even if it's in like a YouTube video, um, you'll click on it, they'll click on it and you can pixel them. So let's do this. And we're gonna do this for every major uh, every major um, cool platform. Okay, so we'll do Instagram next. And people might be asking why why I would start with this. It's because this type of stuff is very low hanging fruit and there's no reason why you shouldn't, if you're going to be doing something for your artist, there's no reason why you shouldn't already have this information out there or already created at the top of a campaign. Honestly, half of the work with the marketing plan is just the basic setup. So if you're going to be putting a marketing plan together, if you want your release to be successful, you do want to have a marketing plan. And for that, you want to make sure that you optimize every facet that you can of the artist's campaign. So for this, we're going to be setting up all these links. It's going to be tedious for a second, but ultimately that's going to give you the opportunity to be able to use this to your advantage when you have the release come out. Say you have these links embedded in a YouTube video that you have up on your YouTube channel that you're running ads against and people happen to just stumble on these links in your description. Well, if somebody clicks on it, that's one person that you get to pixel for an ad buy later on, which for any artist should be a huge asset. Um, 
there's a bunch of different places on socials that you can put all this information. There's even a bunch of places on Feature FM that you can embed these links. So just keep that in mind. Um, let me finish doing this really fast. Right. And for TikTok, um, it can really be any, it can either be your profile or your use my sounds for like a specific song. I always like to say use the um, latest use my sounds because if you have Feature FM um, and you're using our platform, you can actually have the user open up a track into TikTok if they're on mobile. So we'll do, um, We'll do that for this example. You can use the artist profile too if they're active on there. This artist in particular is not active on there. Okay, so we've got all of our links created. Um, I would just hyperlink these in the marketing plan. Again, all of this data is going to be stuff that you can already have created so that when you need it, when socials become more involved in the campaign, you can worry about what you're gonna do with that. So now you're thinking, why did I create all these links and where the hell can I put them? Great question. So for that, you can put them pretty much anywhere on any of your socials, like Facebook, you have a bio, you can link to other socials, you can use these links anytime anybody clicks on it, you can pixel it. Your website, any links that you have that are icons that are linking to socials, you should optimize and put in these short links. They're gonna go to the same place anyways. You might as well pixel the user and gain some information on your end. Um, you can also put them in your YouTube video descriptions, which I can show you right now. So if you look at the vid any video that you look at on YouTube has these sort of descriptions that put in there. A lot of people will put in uh, hashtags and just a one sentence thing. I actually suggest that you put in um, a three, two to three sentence description of your artist profile or your profile, and then put in all the links to your socials uh, with the short links that I just created, uh, there is no reason not to include Spotify or Apple or whatever streaming service that you're more popular on in the description. Um, but you put those short links in here so that you can take advantage of those. Also on the artist's about page, which oftentimes is a popular place for people to go to to find contact information, you can put in the links to the socials in here. Um, you can also include them in the buttons that show up for your channel. So make sure that you have all of these buttons um, showing up for all the popular websites that you have. That would be another place where you could um, put these links and get somebody to search the pixel for somebody clicking on it. You can also put it in any of the playlist descriptions on your channels. So you can look at um, when you click on a playlist, there's always a description that will show up. Let me see if I can find one here. Yeah, so like right here, you can put a link for all your socials as well. Um, you want to do that as much as you can because these are all things that people could accidentally stumble on at any given moment and you want to be prepared. So that's what you can do with these links on YouTube, on Facebook. You can put them in the about section. You can put them in a lot of other sections where you can link out to other profiles um, like right here for your socials. Uh, you can put it in the about section for like when you have your bio or anything like that, your website, uh, all those are links that you can make short links of and serve pixels. So that will cover the optimization on the link side for your actual social profiles. Um, there are a few things that I recommend doing at the start of a campaign because you'll already have assets or you'll be 
you'll already have assets created or you'll be in the process of doing that for the release. So there's three things that I always like to tell people when they ask for sort of tips on what they should do. So for the release, we'll make like a pre-release checklist. Number one, write a short bio and update it on every streaming service. So what that means is write a short bio about your release. If you have a press person, they can do it for you. If you just do it yourself, it's just as good. And write a short bio and update it on every streaming service. That means Amazon, Spotify, Pandora, uh, YouTube, Music, uh, which is powered by the EPK off of your channel. Um, do it on Apple Music, Deezer, Tidal, whatever streaming service that you have access to, update, update that stuff. But believe me, it, it'll be a huge pain in the ass, but it's something important that you need to do because it's branding you as an artist or it's branding your artist for other people when they see it. You don't want to be the person that has a million streams on a song. And when somebody goes to Google your YouTube channel, they surface your YouTube channel and it's a photo of you from like 13 years ago when you had no hits and there's no bio. So just make it as stupidly simple as possible and put it up there. Also for streaming services, if you're going to be pitching any streaming services, having all of that info updated with like a new picture and a new bio, it's going to get you a lot further than just cold emailing somebody and saying, hey, put me on your playlist. They're not going to give a shit. So do that first. The second thing for your release checklist is look at all of your socials. Okay. Look at them and make sure that it's optimized. Make sure that you have a sentence description in your Twitter bio. Make sure that Instagram is set up. Make sure that on Instagram, you've got like, you've got stories that are pinned. You know, you can do different things on your Instagram profiles to sort of make it more optimized for people to engage with your music. What does that mean? Well, let me show you. This is an artist that I'm a huge fan of. And this will translate better on mobile. But these stories right here are things when you swipe up, it'll automatically go to those places. What could you do with the links that you just made for the short links? Well, you could put them in as the destination link for your artist profile and have people swipe up and go there. This is the perfect example of what an artist Instagram page should look like. They've got the release updated. They've got these icons. All the branding is consistent. They've got Reels and IGTV set up. Go here if you want an example. But when I say optimize, this is what I mean. Make sure that everything that you're doing is clean. Make sure that it's optimized and straightforward for fans. Make sure you're making those little icon images and setting them as the default on Instagram, making sure Make sure that if you're going to use TikTok or Instagram, that you have a bio link, which you can make on our platform um, on there. Make sure that if you have a website, that your website is updated. Make, just, just clean it up. I'm just going to put that on there. And then the third thing is um, for your pre-release checklist, diversify the content that you're trying to um, put together for your release. Start thinking about that ahead of time. What you don't want to have is boring content that's not optimized for the service that you want to distribute it to. And what I mean by that is you need to size things, correct, things correctly for each, for each platform. So Facebook's different than Twitter. Don't be the lazy person that posts the same image on Facebook and Twitter because they're not the same sizing specs. Um, don't be the lazy person that posts the same story on YouTube that you do on Instagram. Like make it different chances are if somebody's a fan of yours they're following you on different services so just don't be lazy that's going to be our third thing don't be lazy with content if you're gonna release content or you're gonna showcase a part of your life make sure it's interesting because nobody's gonna care if it's bore if it's you like eating oatmeal for breakfast yeah those steel cut oats are super awesome for your health but i don't care make it convincing make it current make it something that's relevant to your release branding is a huge part of why people are successful these days. You could have a great song, but if you don't have a good look on digital, nobody's gonna care. Um, that would, those would be the three things that I would say. So make sure that the content is, is sized correctly and interesting. So now that you have our pre-release checklist, 
what we're going to do is make a list of the types of content that you need to make for the release, which we'll go over next week on how you can market. So what types of content? Well, let's say this is an EP. So it's the marketing for this is going to be a little different, right? You're going to want to probably do some third party playlist outreach. You're going to want to pitch your DSP um, for editorial. You, you should be talking to your distribution company for marketing and making sure that they will help you with the streaming side of it as well, which we can go into um, in questions if you guys have questions about how to reach out to those people. But for the content for your release, you're gonna need an album cover. We're doing an EP for this, so that means that it inclines that there'll be a cover for the EP and then we'll have probably a single cover for each um, single, we'll say it's four. So we'll need an album cover, we'll need four single cover, We'll need four album art track videos. We're not gonna do static videos for this because honestly, it's gonna be boring if you do that and it'll be useless. Also think about Canvas. You really wanna put people through the pain of listening to a new song with shitty artwork? No, you don't. Uh, next thing, content for release. I would say do a live stream just because it's a pandemic and you can't do anything interesting right now. Live stream. Um, I would say probably do that on YouTube. Uh, that's generally the biggest service for a lot of folks. I know that there's Twitch and other ones that you can do it on, but I would say do a live stream on one of your social media accounts, whatever's the largest. You could do it on um, TikTok or Instagram as well. I would say make some, um, make some like videos of you talking about the track or just something interesting for the first single um, I would say make it sized for your cell phone or something that you could post as a story on Instagram or TikTok. Th what this will end up being is we'll have it be like part of the advertising campaign that we'll do on TikTok because we'll walk you through how to set that up. So I would say make, um, we'll do like um, ad creative. We'll do one that's sized by like 16 by nine and then uh, nine by 16. We'll go over what that means later on if you don't know the sizing specs. Um, we'll also do, we're not going to do any static content for ads because pictures are boring. We'll also need you to do audio liners. So audio liners would be um, describing, um, like saying like my new track is out now or something like that for the single or the EP. So you'll need to record that. I would make it um, for Spotify, uh, Pandora, because you can upload those, those there for free. And then also Amazon Music. If you're Billie Eilish and you're watching this stream, I would make it for Apple Music. If you're not Billie Eilish or somebody that's releasing a lot of Apple Music and can get that shout out, don't worry about it. Um, let me see what else we want to make. I would also, I would also maybe do um, some type of like live audio um, for social media. I'll clarify that next week, but this will be the content list that we'll go through for this. And yes, I will show you how to make all of this content. You're welcome. Uh, besides the content, we've got the socials down, streaming services. So these will be the streaming services that we're gonna focus on for the release. So if you don't have, I mean, most of you probably have some of these. I'm going to add YouTube music in here and I'm going to add Amazon as well. If you don't have a profile, on Boom, Play, and Gami or QQ, um, I would suggest doing that um, internationally. No reason to just think that the first seven of these are like the world's biggest. They're not. Um, there are actually a few that are larger than some of these, actually most of these. Um, so I would, I would say just if you're walking along in this example, I would include all of these stores as my stores. You could get into a more detailed territory breakdown of like, um, you know, Europe, Asia, Asian countries in particular, I think would have more popular stuff. Um, we'll also want to add to this um, a custom merch store. We're gonna pretend to do merch. So we'll just do like a pretend merch photo uh, to do that, to lump in the release. And then we're gonna map out our content calendar so we're going to say that we're starting in November and December. The release is going to come out on the 31st. So we'll say um, 31st release. 
is out worldwide. We're going to start the top of the campaign. I always like to do at least 60 days if you have an EP coming out, uh, preferably 90, but that's what we're going to live with for right now. So I'm going to say that our first single will come out next Friday, which is going to be the 13th. That is creepy. Uh, so we'll say the first single comes out. And we'll start the pre-save then as well. That'll be when the release is out, the EP release is out. We'll do another single at the top of December after Thanksgiving. So for that, we'll say like December 6th. Say second single and pre save available. And then the release is out worldwide. We'll do a uh, we'll do a third single as a focus track so that we can pitch DSPs that way. Okay, so this is what we're gonna start with. Um, leading up to the 13th. We're going to need to create a pre-save. We're going to need to have our artwork done. We're going to need to do a few things. But for right now, next week, we'll go into sort of what you need asset-wise to launch everything. And we'll walk through a pre-save. Um, right now, we're just going to sort of fill in the content calendar so we know next week like what we need to create. So looking at this, we've got you know three major dates. So for the 13th, if we're doing a pre-save, then we're gonna wanna do like an in case you missed it post like three days later. And then we'll link to the pre-save, which we will create in our next one. The next thing that we'll do is we'll wanna do some type of like playlist post. So I would say on the 20th, Let's do a playlist post. And we're going to do an action page for that. To pre save. Or, no, actually, we're going to do to save the playlist that we make. We'll get into that in a second. On the 24th, we'll do a music video. Actually, on the 27th, we'll do a music video. So this will come out on the 20th. We'll release a music video for this. I always like to budget in two weeks from the release. Some people like to release the music video with the song at the same time. I'm not a fan of that, so because this is our webinar, we're going to do it the way that we want. And then the release will be out worldwide. So these are like the major ten poles, I suppose, for our campaign. And in between this, we'll do on the 14th, we'll just do uh, an action page to do a second playlist. We're gonna start a campaign for TikTok or Instagram um, for a user acquisition campaign in conjunction with the action page. So on the 21st, we'll start the in, we'll start the band building uh, campaign. For the music videos, we'll do a, a Google Ads campaign with pre-roll, with a 15 second pre-roll. We're gonna need to put that in our list of content. And then we'll do that same thing for after the music video release on the 20th.
Okay, this looks pretty filled in. For the, we're gonna do another campaign for fan acquisition on the 15th. I'll elaborate more on that next week, so that'll be fun. Okay, so in terms of like the content and the expectations for deliverables, it's pretty set with the types of content we're gonna do. So we're gonna release the first single and the pre-save on November 13th. We'll do, um, and in case you missed it, post for the new EP. Is it in? We'll do fan building, we'll do a music video, we'll do Google Ads campaign for that. Then we'll do a second single on the sixth with an action page to save a second playlist. And then IG, TikTok, fan building campaigns for lookalike audiences, music video for second single, Google Ads campaign, and then we'll do a release, which is out worldwide. And then on January 1st, we'll do another campaign for the EP. We'll do Instagram, TikTok, and Google. Actually, we'll do Instagram, TikTok, Google Ads, Spotify, and Amazon. Okay, so then for our ad budget for this, let's set the budget for that. So ad budget for the entire release, I'm gonna set is like $2,500. You'll still be able to replicate this if you have an ad budget of like 250, so don't worry about it. Um, and then for our ad platforms, we're going to target, I'll list those out now. We'll do TikTok, Google Ads, Instagram, Spotify, and we'll do Amazon. Let's format this correctly. So we've got all of these set up now. And then we're, for a list of content, we're also gonna need to do two playlists. I like to do like two playlists minimum. So two playlists that we can put on all of our streaming services. One, an entire discography playlist. And uh, two, um, the greatest hits, which will be like the most popular songs that you have. Um, you can also do a third optional playlist of stuff you're listening to. Or interested in. Okay. So that's all set up now. The last thing that we're going to make today is the bio link for the release or for your artist because we want to put that into um, the artist profile before we start marketing anything. So bio links are available on our platform. They live up here in the upper right hand corner. Um, you can click on the edit button into any artist folder and we can edit this. So we're gonna pretend like we're releasing an album for share. So we're just gonna call it ffm.bioshare. We're gonna upload the profile image. It can be anything from like a GIF to a static image. I like to use GIFs just because I think that they're cooler. Um, so we're going to use a GIF that I already downloaded uh, for this. Let me get it. And if that doesn't work, then we're just going to do a static image. I actually think I downloaded this incorrect. Yep, I did. Okay. So we'll do that. We're going to say that like the colors for the release are going to be like, we'll say that they're going to be like white and pink. So we want this to stand out a bit. We'll keep this just because of the background that we're going to use. We'll keep this like super simple and we'll just keep that white. We'll use branding on the rest of this. So for the description, this is the part where you can just sort of update it because the use cases where we're going to put this is going to be um, on TikTok or Instagram, or we could even use this as like a website substitute, which we will for this campaign. Um, so for us, for the description, we're going to say, um, I'm releasing, I like to personalize it a bit. So I'm releasing a new album on December 31st. 
since we're in the same year, you don't need to say like December 31st, 2021. Um, my first single will drop on November 13th. I am pretty. Actually, let's use an emoji. You can use emojis. I'll let's find one right now. There we go. Okay. Um, and then for the background, we're going to change that to one that I found that is glitter. Because that is cool. Now you can use uh, the default background, you could use a color, you can really use anything that you want. I like using GIFs just because I think that they're super fun and weird. And I like fun weird things. So now that we've uploaded the GIF, you can see now that like the white for the other part might not work the best. So in that section, we could just make it a different color. So we can make it like a blue. Let's see what looks the best. I think pink just might. Let's try yellow. Let's try yellow. Okay, links and actions. Um, these are all ones that I've already filled in before, but because we're starting this as like a new campaign, let's just keep like the highlights. So we'll do actions like subscribe to YouTube because we don't have to create anything for it. Make sure that the email is out. Fix the text color. Um, action, we're going to remove that for now because we don't have anything. So in these links right here, we can add whatever we want. I would say let's just link to her merch store. I've already got that. Let's change the icon though and make it a little bit better. Let's use this. I like to use bright colors. Feel free to use whatever you obviously want to use. Okay. And then we have a Spotify playlist embedded, but because this is just the beginning of the cycle, we're just going to keep that here. So we've got this all set up now, email, YouTube channel, that. This will be the start of the campaign. We've got the social icons that were already pre-populated that you could put in here. Um, we've got social cards, that looks beautiful. And then in here, I would just make sure that you have like the pixels installed. We'll just put in pretend ones. Again, you can grab these uh, from the ones that, we sh that I showed you earlier. This would be Facebook Business Manager. This would be Google Ads. So now that that's set, we can grab the link up here and we'll put it into our marketing plan. Okay, so I think our marketing plan is all set up now, at least for the very beginning portion of it. We've got everything sort of filled in. So next week when we come back to this, we will dive into the content and we will dive into uh, creating our first pre-save, the action pages, the content, and then we'll dive into the streaming services and a few other things that we need to do to sort of finish this off before the first single is slated to launch. Um, so thank you all for coming. Um, really appreciate you guys uh, coming out for all of these webinars. Um, and uh, I'll be answering questions now as well.